Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me in the Star Studio today. My name is Chris and I am from the Minnesota Zoo. Uh, the Minnesota Zoo, if you've never been there before, we are about 20 minutes south of where we are at the St. Paul Children's Hospital today. And I have four friends with you, or friends with me, for you today. And we're gonna take a little trip around the world in about a half an hour. Our very first friend is on the table. It's a box. I'm gonna tell you that my friend is hiding under the box. So think in your brains of all the things I could have brought, what could be hiding under this short little box? Mm, I'm gonna give you a hint. It has four legs and a tail. No fur and a shell. Any guesses? Maybe some of you are thinking turtle and you would be right. This is a super cool kind of tortoise actually. This is called a pancake tortoise and this is my little friend Hope. And Hope is a little girl and she is, she's just very, very sweet, but they're called a pancake tortoise because they're kind of, well, they're shaped like a pancake. They're very flat. Most tortoises are very, very tall. And these tortoises are very flat. Look at that beautiful picture. You guys can see all of her markings, all of those beautiful stripes. It almost looks like she's got little sunbursts, doesn't it? And there's her face. There's Miss Hope. Yeah. And you can see that she's very, short. She's very low to the ground. And where she lives in Africa, there's lots and lots of rocks. And for her, being short is good because she has one of the coolest tricks of any tortoises. You guys want to know what it is? She can squish herself in between the smallest little crevices of a rock and her shell is just a little bit flexible. Most turtles, when you, if you push down their shell, they're very, very hard. She's just a little bit flexible, so she can squeeze in between the rocks. Let's turn her this way just a little bit so you guys can see just how skinny she is. And then when she goes underneath the rocks, she can squish her shell down and she gets nice and comfortable and then she can push her shell up. And so then, She's kind of wedged in there and nothing can get her out. So I'm gonna show you guys. We have this very short box. I'm gonna turn Miss Hope around. She's gonna show you, maybe. Hope, let's do the box. So she'll go under a, under a box or not. Okay, we wanna be on camera today. That's fine too. One of the cool things about her, you guys, other than her shell, a lot of tortoises and turtles like to be by themselves. That big fancy science word is called solitary. And these little tortoises like to hang out in groups. They like to have a little party. There's a whole bunch of them together. And they like to have lots of friends. And so hope is kind of fun because once she gets out and she gets going, she kind of likes to hang out with the people too. What do you think she eats? What do you think she eats? Well, think about what you like to eat. She loves to eat, oh, we're gonna try the box. No, we're just doing a U-turn. She's all over today, friends. I don't know what she's doing. Her favorite foods, she really, really likes to eat flowers. Now, I'm sure all of you had flowers for lunch. Right? No? She loves flowers. She also loves lettuce. How many of you guys like salads and lettuce? That's her favorite. Leaves and lettuce and the occasional flower. So she doesn't eat a lot of really big stuff like some of our other tortoises that might eat like a whole apple. She's not gonna eat that. She likes her lettuce which is good because where she lives in Africa, there we go, doing the box, there we go, say, how low can she go? The tortoise is very low, how low 
Okay, and she go, you guys, this box is not big. This box is like two knuckles deep. And so she can really get in there. Disappearing tortoise. Now, if she was in a rock, she'd, like I said, this is a part where she'd take her shell and make it a little bit bigger. And she'd be wedged in there. So if I was an animal trying to get in there and get her, she's safe. She can't be caught. She's not going to come out. We're going to do a little peek. One more look at Miss Hope. All right. Let's see if we can get a good look at her face because I think she's adorable. So she's got a really kind of, I think, kind of fun. Can you guys see her eyes? She's got black eyes. And then she's got kind of a, a beak to tear off all those grasses. She's kind of moving her legs around. Look at that little swimming action. Ooh, look. Oh, my goodness. You guys, she needs some lotion. She's got some dry skin. Whew. But we were talking about she likes the grass and the leaves and not so much the apples. Where she lives in Africa, it is very dry. And there's just, there's not a lot of really big fruit plants or thing, anything like that. So she really does like to eat the leaves, the grass. She's heading back to her rock. Do you think she likes hanging out underneath something? She sure does. Now you guys, if you're in your rooms and you're watching, you can call that number, ask a question, and we will answer it to the best of our ability. I don't have all the answers, but we're going to let Miss, oh, I have one more question for you guys. Before we go, here's the question of the day. If I have a turtle or a tortoise, which is right, turtle or tortoise? Because you've heard both, right? Well, can I let you in on a secret? Yeah. They're all turtles. The ones that live in the uh. water, yeah, they're all part of the turtle family. Tortoises are just a little bit different because they live on land most of the time and they have this big thick skin that kind of looks like elephants. If we want to get really, really fancy, turtles swim in the ocean, tortoises live on land, and terrapins are our freshwater turtles that we have here in Minnesota. But if you call them turtles, you're always right. Okay. We're going to put Miss Hope home. Put her back in her little car seat, also called a cooler. Has a nice little heater in there for her. She's very happy. All right. My next friend, I'm going to move this. We're going to put a white one down so you guys can see this one really, really well. Because this one is just fun to watch. Okay. Now, we're going to stay in Africa. And this animal in Africa is a giant. What could I have? Think of giant animals that live in Africa. Ooh, elephants. Don't fit in the car. Giraffe. No. What about giant African millipedes? You guys, giant bugs giant millipedes. We have millipedes in Minnesota, but our millipedes are kind of small. These are the big ones, the big friends from the rainforest in Africa. But you know what? Doesn't matter if they're from Africa, doesn't matter if they're from Minnesota, they have the same job. We talked about those apples that maybe some animals like to eat. These animals, they live in the rainforest, okay? So they're like hot, wet, just raining all the time situation. They're gonna eat all the stuff that think of like a monkey. A monkey doesn't wanna eat his banana. He gets bored, he throws it on the ground. Guess who's gonna come and eat that rotten banana? Millipede. They are kind of like the garbage man and the recycling team of the rainforest. And when they are moving around, they are just really, I think, fun to watch. So we're going to put them on the towel. And I want you guys to see if you can watch those legs. And they kind of move like a wave. You see that? Jugga, 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 jugga. They have about 200 legs. Now, I don't know about you guys. I trip 
with the two that I've got, and with 200 legs, you would think that they would trip. But if you watch my millipede right now, friends, this millipede is running as fast as he possibly can. Full speed millipede sprint. With 200 legs, you don't have to be super fast because you're going to be a little bit stronger than a lot of other animals. These little animals are kind of like little bulldozers. 200 legs all in the same direction actually makes them pretty strong. Now, I always get a question. They say, hey, Chris, if I take a Minnesota millipede, put it in my suitcase, which I don't recommend, and take it to Africa, will it get this big? Hmm, no. No, sorry, our little Minnesota millipedes are made to live in Minnesota and they're small because that keeps them safe during the winter time. Big animals sometimes have a hard time, or big insects sometimes have a hard time because they just, they get too cold. And so our little guys, you know, if you take them to Africa, they're not gonna be this big. I always say that I'm short, I'm only like 5'3 on a really good day. And you can put me in the middle of a basketball court I'm still going to be short. So you can't take our little, Af our little Minnesota millipedes and take them to Africa and expect them to get big. If you guys notice something else about their legs when they walk on the towel, it's kind of cool. They have, I like to call it Velcro feet. So what happens is on the bottom, I don't know if we can see this, but if you guys, he's got all these legs moving around. Look at all those legs. Oh my goodness. So all those legs are moving around, crazy. And at the bottom of each one of those legs is a tiny little hook. And I want you to think about like the Velcro that you might have on your shoes or maybe on a jacket. And you know how Velcro has the hard plastic side but it also has a soft side? Well, millipede legs are kind of like the hard plastic side of Velcro. They've got a little hook. And then if we look at my towel as the soft side of Velcro and we put them together, when I go to move my millipede, guess what happens? Watch my towel, you ready? I'm gonna move him and here goes my towel. Uh-oh, Velcro, he sticks. How cool would it be to climb something if you had Velcro feet? I think that'd be so cool. It helps them climb. And they're not very fast because the food that they eat doesn't run away. Now, the other question people ask is like, well, what does this part feel like? If we know the legs feel like Velcro hooks, what does the top feel like? Well, their top is kind of waxy. They've got this waxy coating to keep them healthy in the rainforest so they don't dry out. And so you think about a candle, how a candle is hard but it's soft and it's kind of smooth, but a little bit sticky, that's what their bodies feel like. Their body feels like a waxy candle with Velcro feet. I think that's kind of cool. Do you think he's ticklish? Oh, are they ticklish? Yeah. Yes, oh my gosh, friends, can I show you the most ticklish thing in the world? If you do this. Oh, that tickles. All those little hooks on your arm. You guys ever play that game, like who can do this the most and then not like, oh, I can't do it. It tickles, I can't, oh, tickle tickly, tickly. Yeah, tickled by millipedes. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'm gonna put him down and put him back in his box with his buddies. I had to put the one guy away because he was just making all kinds of crazy decisions. I'm gonna leave this here for a second. So we have a different kind of bug. This one is a food bug. So these are gonna be little bitty mealworms. If anybody ever goes fishing, maybe those look familiar. Or if you have a reptile pet at home, maybe those look familiar. I'm gonna put them back in my cup just a second so they don't disappear on me. But my next friend eats bugs. She eats so many bugs that she is a special kind of animal called an insectivore. Ooh. Some of you may have heard of a carnivore 
or the plant eating one, I forget. Herbivore, yes. And then there's the one that eats both. People are yelling, I can hear it. Omnivore, yes. But if you are a very, very special kind of carnivore that only eats bugs, you are an insectivore, and that's what this friend is. So she's technically a carnivore because she eats bugs. She's a super cute carnivore. Hi, friend. Oh, my goodness. Friends, we were taking a nap. Good morning. Oh, here we come. Do you guys know what this is? Let's see her little face first. This is an armadillo. This is a three-banded armadillo. Oh, yeah. Kick, 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 kick. Yeah. Do you want some bugs? Can you hold on a second? I know you're excited for the bugs. I'd be excited too. Do you guys want to watch her try and eat something? Let's see if she wants to eat some bugs. You want to eat those bugs? Oh. Good bugs. So this is Catalina, and Catalina is a very good friend. She is kind of an older girl. She's 18 years old. And a lot of people say, well, is that in people years or is that in armadillo years? And those are just years. So she's 18 years old, um, which for a person is not that old. For an armadillo, it's kind of old. So she's kind of like a grandma armadillo, but she's still amazing. Lots of bugs. She's a special friend. Lots of bugs today. Now, armadillos, there's a lot of different kinds. She is a three-banded armadillo, and she gets that name because, watch my fingers, one, two, three. Three little stripes on her back, and then she's got a shoulder plate, like a Superman cape, and she's got a hip plate, kind of like a pair of pants, and then like three belts in the middle. That's how she gets her name, three banded armadillo. There's also friends, six banded armadillos that have six bands, nine banded armadillos that have, you guessed it, nine bands, and there's seven banded armadillos that have, guess what, seven bands. And then there's like fairy armadillos and there's friends. You want something fun to Google later? Oh, there's a screaming hairy armadillo. Not making that up, true story. Real animal, very fun and they do scream, that's how they get their name. We don't have any at the zoo because, hmm, screaming, but they are pretty cool. They all eat bugs, all of them. They're all bug eaters. And the cool thing about three-banded armadillos, they have a trick, kind of like our pancake tortoise, they have a trick that nobody else can do. And we'll see if Miss Catalina will do it for me right now. You're just like letting all the bugs escape today. Oh my goodness, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You show them your trick? <gasps> Boom, there it is. They curl up in a ball and they tuck their little head in. See that? Her head's right here. Hello. Aww. Her tail's right here. And she's got her two big digging claws. Can you guys see those digging claws? Look, armadillo high five. Yeah, high five, good job. That claw, friends, is like if I took my hand and I had a thumb and a pinky and a big claw in the middle. That's what that big claw is. And that's because, you know, in, in the rainforest where she lives in South America, the bugs don't come fed to you on a towel. What does she have to go do in the, in the, in the forest? She's got to go looking for them. She's got to go digging for them. And so she's got those big claws to dig. And here's the cool part. You see that shape of her head? Can you guys show me? That shape of her head, she's a triangle. So she's got a perfect shaped head to so stick her head down a hole and get bugs. Just like that. Stick your head down the hole, get some bugs. And the other cool thing is she's got a tongue like an anteater. Now don't stick your tongue out at, at your family because don't do it. I know you're thinking about it right now. But if you were an anteater, or if you were an armadillo, cousin to an anteater, you would have a super long tongue and you would eat your bugs by <laughs> slurping. Oh, we're just gonna play with the towel now. That's just silly. I brought something for you guys to see if we could watch her walk on the table just a little bit. 
So I'm going to put her in here and I'm going to lift her up in this. We have this kind of clear bin for her to walk in. And then she can walk around. Maybe you can see her just a little bit better. There we go. Maybe she can find some of those bugs she was trying to mess around with. Can you guys see her tail now that she's standing up? <gasps> Look at that little tail. It sounds like she's tap dancing. And can you hear her? I don't know if you can hear her. It sounds like she's tap dancing. And she does sound like she's tap dancing. We should play you some music. I don't know. Can you, should we play Taylor Swift? Can she tap dance to Taylor Swift? Yeah, she liked that. Okay. The funny thing is, friends, is that when they're in their exhibit at the zoo, there's a section that has a hard floor like this. And they do kind of run back and forth. And I always think they kind of sound like a wind up toy. And then they stop. And then they stop. We used to have a boy that lived at the zoo and he, I think he just liked to make the noise. One other thing that people always ask me about our armadillo friends is, well, are they a reptile? Because they have a shell and she's a mammal. So she's gonna be like our cats and our dogs because they have fur and it's really not easy to see, but on her belly, I'm gonna slide this over. If you look at her belly, She's got a kick, 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 furry belly. I hope you guys don't have furry bellies. <laughs> she got furry belly. So she's a mammal. So she has fur and she gives, you know, milk to her babies and all that stuff. And I said she's 18. She's not very big. How big do you think a baby is? A size of a ping pong ball. That's a little baby. Aww. A little, and they're bright pink. Which is kind of fun. All right, so we've seen our tortoise. We saw some millipedes. We saw an armadillo. I have one more friend for you. And she is pretty cool. This is a Minnesota animal. And her name is Meadow. And let me get her out. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the armadillo is still tap dancing. She is making quite the ruckus behind me. All right, Miss Meadow is, oh my goodness, we're hiding. Hi, Miss Meadow. Miss Meadow is a fox snake. Now, a lot of people don't like snakes, and that is fair. But I'm going to tell you guys about five pretty cool things about snakes. First of all, Minnesota, actually, you know, for as far north as our state is, we have a lot of snakes here. Um, and that's because of that Mississippi River, right? It brings them as far north, as far east, as far west as they're going to go in the United States. And you know, we have about 17 different kinds of snakes. And the fox snake, which is what Miss Meadow is, is kind of like a medium-sized snake for our state. And you look at her color and you say, okay, why is she a fox snake? She's not going to eat foxes. She's too small to eat a fox. She's not even the color of a fox. Does anybody know? It's kind of a weird answer. So I don't know if you guys know this, but foxes, well, they don't smell so good. In fact, they kind of stink. They kind of stink a lot. They can smell just like a skunk. And when a fox snake is mad or scared, guess what? They can make that smell. And so that's how they get the fox snake name. And so, yeah, I've never had the, the joy of smelling that, and I don't think I want to, because that just seems really stinky. You guys see the, she's sticking her tongue out. See that? Oh, stop, there we go. Oh, what is she doing? 
So does she not have that smell thing? She has the smell thing. She has. She definitely still has that scent gland. She's just been with people her whole life, nice. so she doesn't feel. You know, she doesn't feel that scared or that threatened. Um, but whew, yeah, I've. There are some baby snakes. When you go to use them and pick them up and get them used to working at a zoo, oh yeah, you go home smelling. Real not fun for a while. It's gross. Now you saw that tongue. There we go, that tongue again. What is she doing, friends? You guys know this. She's smelling. That's how they smell. They breathe with their nose, but they smell with their tongue. And she's got two parts to her tongue. At the end of her tongue, there's a fork. And each side matches up to a hole inside the roof of her mouth. She can actually tell when she's hunting, is the snake to the left? Or sorry, is the mouse to the left or to the right? That's pretty cool. We get a good look at her colors. What's that big fancy science word when an animal blends in? Anybody know? Camouflage? It is camouflage, yeah. And so, I know, science words coming at you. And so camouflage, she's got some pretty good camouflage. Like you're on the table and you're like, mm, I don't know, Chris, I can see her pretty good. But if you think about her being out in really tall grass, think about the grass that grows on the side of a road. It's kind of tall, it's not always green, sometimes it's brown, sometimes there's a patch of dirt. This snake blends in really, really well. And what does she eat? We already said it's not foxes. She eats mice. And if you look at her, if I had never met her before, I would say, oh my gosh, how, well, how would I know what to feed her? Well, we look at the biggest part of their body, and that's about how big of something that they can eat. All right, look at this, she stopped just so we could see how big her body is. And so she opens up her mouth really, really big, and then she can do this thing that a lot of you guys already know. She can unhook, dislocate her jaw. Friends, if you could eat the same way she can, you would be able to swallow a pumpkin. Think about that. Oh my gosh. That's a lot. So they don't eat, need to eat all the time like us humans do, right? Their bodies work a lot different, and so she only has to eat maybe once a week. We have to eat all the time because, like, you guys know that we're always kind of the same temperature unless we're sick, right? Then we get a fever. But snakes, their body temperature, they don't work that way. If it's 80 degrees and she's outside, her body temperature is going to be 80 degrees. If she is outside and it's 40 degrees, her body's going to be 40 degrees. And so outside does all the body heat for them, so they don't have to have that engine that we do that we have to put food in all the time. So they don't need to eat nearly as often as we do. You guys, I feel like a snake treadmill. Oh my goodness, she is all over the place today. You guys smell good here in St. Paul. So somebody always asks how big she is, so we're going to do this. We're going to kind of get her to go. She's that big with some curves in it. She's a pretty big snake. Is she our biggest Minnesota snake? Nope. Our biggest Minnesota snake is, they're called bull snakes. And they're not called bull snakes because they eat bulls. They're called bull snakes because they can make the sound of a bull. Do you guys know what that is? That <laughs> sound Ooh, coming out of a snake. Those snakes get to be six to eight feet. Did you know we had those in Minnesota? Usually in the southern part of the state. So if you're from the north part of the state, you don't have those. If you're from like Albert Lee and places down south, oh, you might see them. So this is Meadow, our fox snake. Minnesota medium-sized snake. Yes. Friends, I'm looking at the clock. It's about that time. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. Meadow wants to thank you too. She's on the move. Um, but thank you for hanging out with, us, with me today. I hope that you have a great day. Look out your window. It's a bright sunny day. Oh my gosh, it's super nice. Have a good 